It was fear and anxiety driven. I was living off Fruity Pebbles and dope. Just fighting for my life every day. Your whole everything can fit at the end of a glass pipe or in the end of a little bitty spoon. Dylan Jarvis is an up-and-coming country music artist whose songs speak about the perils of substance addiction, a subject he's all too familiar with. Dylan grew up in a small church his father pastored where he learned about God and started playing music. At the same time, his mother was struggling with alcoholism. I loved her so much. My main thing, my main worry was her dying. It was causing a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, and a lot of panic. At 12 years old, Dylan's friends exposed him to drugs, prescription pills, weed, cocaine, meth. He began taking anything that would help numb his anxiety. His father tried to rein him in, but that only made him rebel more. So I got extremely addicted, and the withdrawal symptoms were so bad that, like, you'll try to go for anything that can help you. If they told you you could eat dirt, I'd eat dirt just to try to feel better. This went on through Dylan's teens into his 20s. All the while, he continued to do the one thing he truly loved, writing music. Then one day, while in the middle of a drug deal, his guitar was stolen. Dylan was devastated, but his father prayed and told him God would return it. He said, your guitar's coming home in the name of Jesus. And I'm like, all right. This guy calls on Facebook Messenger and I answer and he goes, is this Dylan Jarvis? He said, I was walking my dog through the middle of this field and I walked up on a case. I said, you have my guitar? He said, I have your guitar. He said, well, your pawn receipt was left where you put your picks. He said, I got your name, figured out who you were, and I knew how to contact you. And God kept it safe for six months and got it home to me. It made me just know that I was like, man, there, there's a God out here and he loves me and he knows me by name. Dylan began to see more evidence of God's presence in his life, even as he sank to the lowest depths of heroin addiction. I met this kid, and he goes, I want to introduce you to somebody. And he takes me into this house. And when I walked up, there's this like lady there, and she walked up to me, and she said she placed her hand on my chest, and she just said this really quiet prayer, and she did. It felt like lightning struck me from the left shoulder to the bottom of my right hip, and I fell to my knees. And when I, I fell to the ground, she grabbed me by my face, she looked at my head up, she looked me dead in my eyes. She said, enjoy your life, Dylan Jarvis, there's big things planned. I had this like awakening moment, like I'm brand new. He believed that it was God giving him a chance to get clean, so he stopped doing drugs. Later, while taking a barbecue grill into a local neighborhood to sell, Dylan was held up at gunpoint, with the gunman forcing him back into his truck. I'm sitting there like, sweating, freaked out driving my truck. He's like, look, I want you to pull into the cemetery. And I was like, holy cow, he's about to kill me. Dylan then pushed his foot parking brake. Pretending the truck seized, he got out and quickly grabbed a baseball bat from the bed and started hitting the man. Believing he killed him, Dylan turned himself in to the police. He was nailed with charges that could put him away for 30 years. While in jail, Dylan asked for a Bible and began praying for God to deliver him. At the same time, his grandmother was put on hospice, dying from lung cancer. My grandma meant a lot to me, everything to me. So I hit my knees, and I'm crying out really hard to God. I hear him call over the intercom. They said, Dylan Jarvis? I said, yeah. They said, pack your bags, you're going home. I was like, man, this is the, the best gift anybody could have ever given me. I mean, like, how could a God be so loving and be so perfect and love me and care about me so much. Dylan's grandmother bonded him out, but when she died shortly after, he was overcome with grief and his anxiety resurfaced. He relapsed and overdosed. And I felt myself die. And I felt my spirit fall through my back, my body. I could hear these things and it was like they were laughing at me. Millions of them. So there's tons of fear that came in. And Dad had told me about the name of Jesus. And I was like trying to say his name as hard as I could. And as I'm trying to say it, my spirit was like, boom, Jesus, pow. I said, oh. So I grabbed a ball of dope, threw everything in the toilet. God, this is everything. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in tongues. I'm crying out to you. I'm giving you every inch of me. You can have it. My life's yours, let's go. 
Dylan then went to a Christian rehab center where he spent a year studying the Word of God and building faith to overcome his anxiety. He got clean and has stayed clean ever since. His mother, whom he worried about for so many years, is also on the path to overcoming her alcoholism. Even his charges were dropped after the man he beat recovered and was apprehended in a drug bust. Dylan is now pursuing his passion for music, wanting to share his story of God's grace and enduring love through songs meant to inspire hope in those who feel hopeless. My heart's all on Jesus. My heart's all on God. And he's there guiding me. He's there with me. I'm not scared. The fear got taken. If it's a spirit of fear, spirit of anxiety, spirit of depression, I call it out. You have no authority over my life, none whatsoever. Cover myself on the top of my head to the soles of my feet under the blood of Jesus. I mean, I don't deserve it. I don't, but I know, here's what I know. My job is to tell what Christ has done. 